Hi there, welcome to Nippy Invest. I wasn't going to do a standalone video for Whisper in regards to their Appendix 4C for the December quarter, but the reaction I did feel when I read through their commentary, saw their results, I just thought I will do a video for Whisper. I did a video for the last quarter results, and even though we saw significant top line growth in this company, we did not see that translate to the bottom line. And there has been feelings percolating up in me in regards to these sort of companies, SaaS companies. It seems like management of SaaS companies are only care about increasing revenue over time. They don't care about cash flow. They don't care about profitability. And when you think about the valuation of a company, it's all about future cash flows. So a company eventually has to become profitable has to experience positive cash flow before we can actually give a valuation to that company. In fact, if Whisper never has any future positive cash flow, if it never becomes profitable, the value of Whisper is absolutely zero. In fact, I'd put a negative value to the company because they will do capital raisings. So I do think there's, we're coming to the point where management of these SaaS companies have to realize that even though growth in revenue is important, it's not the only thing they should be focusing on. It's all about focusing on increasing operational cash flow, increasing free cash flow, increasing um, profitability of the company. And a lot of these management of these companies don't think like that. They only care about revenue. And when I do question this, I always get told, well, Amazon didn't really focus on profitability until you know, 10, 15 years after they listed something like that. But Amazon is one of a kind business. For every Amazon, we have 100 companies that try to be Amazon and completely fail. So I want Whisper and other SaaS companies like Whisper, and there is a plethora of these sort of companies on the ASX and also on the NASDAQ. I want them to show me the money. Show me that you are able to become operational cash flow positive. Show me that your business has scale, that you have operating leverage. And I'm being a little bit unfair on Whisper because this is true for all companies in this space. Um, so just keep that in mind as I go through this video on Whisper. Now, Whisper has been around for quite a while. This is a cloud-based communications platform company and been around since 2002, listed on the ASX. Just before the COVID-19 financial panic, June 2019, so they were listed for about six or seven months. And just before the COVID-19 financial panic, I was taking a very close look at this company. The CEO and co-founder of the company, Jeremy Wells, he has 11% holding in the, in the company. And two of the major shareholders are Regal Funds and Pi Funds, both with about a 9.8% and 8% holding in the company. And the current market cap of Whisper, not too stretched based off their annual recurring revenue and the growth in their recurring revenue is 274 million. That's at a share price of $2.33. And the T code for Whisper is WSP. So a lot of these companies like Whisper, Big Tin Can, all those sort of SaaS companies are usually valued uh, based off their annual recurring revenue and the growth in their annual recurring revenue. And for Whisper, at the end of the financial year 21, that was up to 53.6 million. Good growth from the previous year, which was 41.7 million. And the revenue was tracking that fairly well, up to 47.7 million. So typically, revenue will be just a little bit behind and recurring revenue. Uh, fairly ordinary gross margins when you come to think about it. So there must be some reason behind that, only 60%. A lot of these sort of companies have gross margins or profit margins over 90%. Now, it comes down to the operating cash flow and net profit. And this is where I do have a problem with a lot of these companies. And they don't really, management don't really seem to care about they are operational cash flow negative and unprofitable. And for Whisper, they were operational cash flow negative by $3.3 million in financial year 20 and unprofitable by $10 million in that year. And they do have a fair bit of cash on hand, $50 million. And the EV to annual recurring re revenue is 3.9, which is really low for this sort of company. So if you are comparing apples to apples, which is what I do in this SaaS space, 3.9 for that ratio is quite low. So I do see some value for this company moving forward. 
Now, before we have a look at the most recent Appendix 4C and the cash flow statement, let's just go back one year ago. And I was a little bit excited about this Appendix 4C because Whisper had $11.3 million of receipts and were operational cash flow positive in this one quarter by 413000 And if you look at the first six months of this financial year, which was financial year 21, they had $22, millions of, $22 million of receipts and were only operational cash flow negative by $1.6 million. They also had... $11 million of cash. So they did a fairly significant cup raising over the past year. This company also seems to spend every single quarter around about $1 to $2 million on intellectual property. So you do have to take that into account. So even though I do look at operational cash flow, I also look at free cash flow. And when you look at free cash flow, it takes into account capital expenditure. And I also take into account intellectual property. So even though they were operational cash flow positive for this particular quarter, they were not free cash flow positive. So let's have a look at the most recent Appendix 4C and why I'm a little bit annoyed about Whisper right now. When I first opened up Whisper and I saw the receipts of customers had grown to $25 million, I thought this was fantastic. Significant growth from the previous quarter, in fact, the previous year as well. But the annual recurring revenue is only at $60 million. So that does seem high, that quarterly receipts, based off the revenue. So wouldn't surprise to see a significant drop in receipts in the next few quarters because typically, if you divide the annual recurring revenue by four, which is $15 million, more than likely, if you average out the quality receipts, that's the sort of range you will be, more than likely it's gonna be a little bit lower than that $15 million. So this might be a one-off in regards to Whisper. But even if it is a one-off, I fully expected the company to be operational cash flow positive, but they weren't. They're actually negative by $3.1 million. So the business, even though they're talking about how much it's grown over the past year, I actually think this business has gone backwards. And the main reason this business has gone backwards is because of a significant increase in their costs. So receipts have gone up $14.1 million in the past year. So looking at quarter on quarter. But Product manufacturing operating costs up 6.7.6 million. Administration or advertising and marketing up 500,000. Staff costs up 4.5 million. Administration costs costs up $5 million. So if you total all those costs up, we're looking at costs increasing by about four to five million dollars more than the increase we saw in receipts. And not only that, intellectual property also went up and is now at $2.2 million. So a significant increase in cost over the past year, and that increase in cost was significantly more than the receipts. So this company is showing me absolutely no scale right now, no operating leverage at all in their business. And we need to see that. The management of this company needs to show they can grow this business without growing a cost at a greater rate. And at this point in time, Whispers Management are failing to do that. Now, I am a chill sort of person, so it takes a lot to get me annoyed in all facets of my life, particularly when I'm reading any sort of announcements from a company. But there was a little snippet of commentary in Whisper's Appendix 4C that actually did get me a little bit annoyed, and this is the snippet. Now, it starts off with saying the operating cash flows for the quarter increased 49% over previous corresponding period to 28.6 million. But it was the explanation why the cost had increased that got me a little bit annoyed, a little bit angry, a little bit upset. This is in line with expectations that reflects the increase in cost of sales to support revenue growth. So it's not to support an acceleration in revenue growth, it's just to support revenue growth. So the way I'm looking at this is the management of Whisper were a little bit concerned that the revenue growth was slowing and they wanted it to continue to increase in the future. That was the market expectations. And to support that expected revenue growth in the future, they had to increase cost of sales. They had to get more sales staff, that sort of thing. So that's actually not good for the future of this company because who's to say that in one year's time, the exact same thing won't happen. And then the exact same thing might happen two years in the future. So this company never achieves scale, never achieves operating leverage, never becomes operational cash flow positive, never becomes profitable, even though they keep increasing revenue. So it is actually a significant red flag for me moving forward for Whisper. Now in saying all that, 
when you do look at the receipts history for the company, it's nice. This is exactly what you want to see, a nice solid increase in receipts over time since the first quarter they listed on the ASX, which is the June quarter 2019. Receipts have actually tripled from 8.3 million to 25.4 million. Again, probably the one thing I would say is we did see a significant increase in receipts from the September quarter to the December quarter. And it wouldn't surprise me to see receipts really pull back in the next quarter, maybe to 15 to 17 million, that sort of range, which could be a surprise to the market. And if Whisper don't pull back their costs, this uh, next quarter, the quarter we're in, will have significant operational cash flow uh, negativeness or outflow, and that could also spook the market moving forward. So there's a lot of things to like about their receipts history, but as we turn our attention to the future, there are some red flags possibly there. Now let's turn our attention to Whisper's daily chart, and this goes back to July 2020. And the reason I wanted to go that far back was the share price did reach a high of $5.20 towards the end of July. And we have seen a little bit of weakness, well not a little bit, a lot of weakness in the share price since then. In fact, the share price of Whisper has gone from $5.20 all the way to a low of $1.80, which was reached during December of 2021. But in saying that, uh, things do look quite interesting for Whisper over the past month and a half. Does look like this potential downtrend in the share price and this negative sentiment could be turning around. We could be seeing an uptrend developing in the share price. In fact, the share price has moved from $1.80 to a high of $2.90. And we have seen a little bit of a pullback in the past few weeks because of the overall weakness in the market. But the share price has hit the uptrend, developing uptrend, and has pulled up from that uptrend. So really interesting chart here for Whisper. And the way I would play this, and this is definitely something I am thinking about, is this could be just a short to medium term trade, just playing this change in sentiment, change in trend of the share price, and then just ride it as far as it can go, because who knows what's going to happen with the financials. Maybe management will see the light and understand that increasing the top line revenue is important, but what's also important is becoming operational cash flow positive, free cash flow positive, profitable and that's when you become a real business and you can give all your um, cash flow back to the shareholders in one way or another through growth of the business through dividends through share buybacks that sort of thing so a few ways to play this particularly if you are just a short to medium term trader i think this shift in in sentiment in the trend of the share price is looking really interesting right now that's all i have for this appendix 4c december quarter video for Whisper. Uh, I would like them to show me the money. I would like this company to show me they can become operational cash flow positive on a consistent basis. Even free cash flow positive would be better and profitable. So even though I am sort of whinging about the financial performance of Whisper and the fact that management are only really focused on revenue growth, they don't really care about the important growth in operational cash flow and free cash flow, they are actually looking interesting when it comes to the technical side. If you do like any questions, just leave it in the comment section of this video. Otherwise, I'm not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a good day. Bye.